for science. The third tool we are going to make available for you is actually not one tool, but several tools. Um, the emphasis of this week is, is sharing out uh, additional resources and enrichment resources that students can voluntarily read and, and engage with science and science content. Um, the two areas that I chose to focus on were actually books and videos, although as we kind of end this tutorial we'll talk about a couple of other things and other places you can go as well. What I want to show and share though is specifically um, four items or four places you could share a list of books that might be enriching for your class. And the first one is Amazon.com. Amazon.com I think is a useful tool for a lot of teachers. I do suggest, as I mentioned in some of the other tutorials, that you create an account that is specifically for school. And here's why. So here's me and my account, Mitchell'sAmazon.com. Take a look at what they recommend to me. And you can kind of see, you know, what's what's all about me. You know, I've got a lot of suggested books. Now, the thing is, though, is I use this account to order books for myself, for my wife, for my kids. So there's a lot of different things that are on this account. Um, in fact, when I go to my account, the the feature that I would suggest you use with with your your students would be to to scroll down and to create this public profile. Oops, let me scroll up there, sorry about that. This public profile actually creates a place where you can verify who you are. In order to become this real name certified, you've got to use a credit card account and purchase something, and then it can verify that you really are a real person and that that's your real name. And so I've got my favorite Simpsons avatar on there and some information about myself, but you'll also notice again that I have um, recommendations that are just varied and different things that these are ideas for gifts and I've got some favorite books and and maybe some of these of my favorite books are not I don't I maybe mean, I don't want to be that public with what I'm doing I mean I want to be a little more private with my students and so I want to create an account that's specifically for the students but by doing that and creating an account you can create these kinds of lists and the two things I think are useful is list mania in list mania I can create a list of books that I think are a great series for kids to, to see. So here's one is Dragonlance for Younger Generations. Um, I guess I have just the one, it says I've got three lists, but I don't know, oh, here we go, see all of my lists. I knew I had a couple of other ones. So I've got a couple of lists, this is some fantasy to read after Harry Potter, some future tech stuff, but you could use this to create you know, volcano books and avalanche books and weather and or matter and create a list of books that the students might find interesting. Additionally, with this, you can actually create a public wish list. Um, you notice on my account, let me just go back, that I have a public list here that is called Ideas for Vanessa, my wife, and you know, it's she, some ideas that she could um, could maybe use or maybe interested in these things I'm thinking about purchasing. And the same thing, this wish list here is a list that's public and it's f books that my son wants me to buy him, mostly. <laughs> but it's, if it's a public list, anyone can come in here and see this list and choose to purchase it for me. So this might be a good way to, to get some donations from um, parents if, if that's something that you're comfortable with doing. Now, I do kind of like the Amazon because of those features, but a couple of other items that are a little bit more, um, I think, appropriate for the school setting is one of them is called Shelfari. Now, this was actually purchased by Amazon, so it's part of the Amazon community. And um, it's just a great one. Let me sign in really quickly. I'll get my email address here. I don't want it to remember me on this computer. So here's me. You can see I've got my picture up there, and I've got a list of books, books that I plan to read, things that I'm currently reading. Um, so you have a lot of different items. And so, again, though, these are some of my personal preferences. So you could, and I have done this, actually, is created a separate one. Wrong password. Yep, 
looks the same though, doesn't it? So I don't have as much I've done on this one, but I can still pop in here and list out what I've planned on read. And the reason this can be also useful is it allows you to create what are called widgets that you can share out on other web pages, um, maybe back on your my UEN page, and you also have a public profile that anyone can see. Um, I'm look, I'm friends with myself, <laughs> and so I haven't, you know. I, I don't have a lot on this particular account, but I can use this account and create this account to share a list of books that I find interesting for students. And almost any book you care to find is going to be in here. I'm just going to put in Volcano, since that's what we're working on. And so maybe I want to add this, and I can actually add it to, oh, I plan on reading it, and I'm going to add it to a specific shelf. If I want to do that, I can create a new bookshelf and um, add these things. So this is kind of a useful one for creating lists of books that you find good for that. Um, now this is another website. I had to get the, my email for it. This one is called Library Thing. Now this is in a kind of an interesting situation right now because Amazon.com bought Shelfari and it bought a company called Abe Books, and Library Things is owned in part by Abe Books, but Library Thing and Shelfari are competitors, so I don't know how that's going to influence some things. It may be kind of interesting in the future. Uh, you notice I have um, a list of books here that work, and kind of some books that I can work with, and the same kind of a thing. You can create a public profile and make it so that people can see these things and kind of take a look at the books you're suggesting for them. Most of them also allow you to quickly and easily um, do a book review and other other things like that. The last one I want to share is called Goodreads. It's really similar. All three of these websites are really, really, really pretty um, similar. I mean, they're just they're a place you can create a list of books and interact with other book readers and and talk about books and make lists of books. And so. All three of them are pretty good, and I'm not going to bother logging into this one because it's it's not really significantly different than the other two. I like Shelfari probably the best because of the look. I like Goodreads the best because of the interaction I've had on that one. Those are the, the differences in those two. I actually don't use library thing very much. The last book-related item I'm going to show you is called Google is Google.com Books. Um, this is similar to what you can do with those other tools, but it uses Google's powers to and brings all of its abilities to bear. Um, let's just do a quick search for Volcano here. And again, I get a list of, of look, there's the same book, um, the National Geographic book on volcanoes. Now, this will let me see some of the book, and sometimes the entire book, um, online and that's another kind of unique feature of this in fact one of my favorite examples of this is actually it's a novel but it's called um, Name and Fortune by Horatio Alger and so this book right here I was able to find it it's out of print it's not available anymore but I was able to read the entire book online it was scanned in at uh, the University of Michigan libraries there's a lot of different ones that are available that are on this, and you can add this book. Oh, that's a new feature. You can download it. I th some of these you can download and, and add them into um, like a Kindle or a, some of those other book readers. I want to. Oh, this is already in my library. There's usually a place here where it's you can add it to your library. So that's another one. Now the last thing I was going to mention is another way of sharing out additional materials with students is is there's a multitude of them. Um, I'm going to go to a place, a website called Share This. I should have put that in properly. ShareThis.com is actually like this huge site that allows you to create widgets for your for your your own website. But this Share This button, um, I'm going to click on it, and well, that's not what we actually need. It lets you create this button. But if you, what I wanted to really show you was just what is available <laughs> sorry it's um there we go 
there's just a, a large array of all kinds of things. You can share things through Dig, through MySpace, through Stumble, through Facebook, through you know Google, Google Buzz, through Twitter. So there's all kinds of services you can you can do. I'm betting if I put in Amazon, I may even be able to find an Amazon option. But that's another thing you could do is use Delicious or Digo or one of these social networking tools that allows you to share um, with students and you could share um, websites and URLs and, and maybe have a link onto that off of your MyUEN page. So there's some tools you can do. If you choose whichever one of these you choose to do to create a list of resources um, for students to be enriched with, um, just add a link to it in your lesson plan tool, whether it's Google Books, Goodreads, Library Thing, Shelfari, Amazon.com, or even one of these alternatives like Share This or Twitter or Facebook. If you want to use any of those other tools, just add that to your lesson plan and send me the URL to the lesson plan.